The world of gaming is always trudging forward, and sometimes it's nice to stop and take a little look back. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most nostalgic moments for 2000s gamers. Starting off at number 10, it's the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer experience. Now, the Call of Duty series was pretty big by the time Modern Warfare 2 came out, but it was really here where the series became the biggest thing in gaming. For a lot of people out there, this was where the series peaked as well. And even if it was kind of a frustrating and broken mess at times, for anybody who was playing Modern Warfare 2 religiously back in 2009, remembers how big of a deal this was. Whether you were in high school playing 1v1 after getting home or playing in groups online between classes and college, this game was everywhere. People who never talked to each other before suddenly became best friends because of this game. And even if those friendships didn't last past the last day of school, and I'm not saying that none of them did, in case you've got a lifelong friend that this is how you met, but the memories stick with you. I mean, it wasn't all great, of course. The Model 1887s and the UMP45s could really be a nightmare, along with, you know, all the glitches. But it didn't matter. The game was just that good. And on top of being good, it was everywhere. It was so present. And number nine is going on your first rampage in any GTA game. Doesn't matter which one it is, except five, which of course came out in 2013. All the other ones came out the decade prior. And you could have started with GTA back in 2001, all the way up to GTA 4 in 2008. I'm going to exclude 4's DLC because it didn't really add to the world and also came out in 2010. So we're talking about the world that came out in 2008 anyways. I'm being pedantic here. None of this matters. Uh, once you're free to explore the open world, you find a gun somewhere and you start shooting, right? Like, yeah, we all play a couple of missions and then the open world is there and we're like, eh. Let's try this. Usually you don't last long the first time around because, again, you got like some crappy gun and you're just walking around. You don't know the cheats yet. But it didn't matter. It was a game that just let you do whatever you wanted. You could wander around. You could cause some mayhem, get a police chase. Didn't matter. And that's what made it so awesome. Now, throw in the cheat codes. That's when it really gets sweet. Now, these days, it's not as fun to just start trouble in games anymore. At least not most open world games. There's a few exceptions. But with the Grand Theft Auto games, there's just a real joy to just start messing around. It almost feels like a lost art. Chilon. It's just fun to do stuff that you know you're not supposed to do in a game. Like, we all know this stuff is wrong in real life and would never do it, and that's partly why it's so fun. At number eight, capping your friends, like killing them from across the map with the pistol in Halo. If Modern Warfare 2 wasn't your big multiplayer obsession in the 2000s, probably safe to say Halo was, right? Whether it was split screen or over a LAN in Halo 1, playing on Xbox Live for the first time with 2, or going nuts with the Forge in 3, it doesn't matter because all three games were amazing, especially back then during the height of their popularity. Like, there were so many great moments just playing the original Halo, realizing how overpowered Power the pistol was, for instance. Or, you know, like jousting with warthogs. That was a lot of fun. Rather than being super competitive like Modern Warfare, Halo is kind of more of a sandbox thing. It's a place to have fun and screw around in, at least for me. It's still a lot of fun to get into an intense game or two. Like, that's not impossible or anything. And it is great. But the real entertainment kind of came from screwing around. I mean, Rooster Teeth made an entire media empire out of just screwing around in Halo. That's what Red vs. Blue was. Is? Like, is. It's still around. Like, they make new episodes of that. And it's still them playing around in Halo. Maybe your nostalgic moment is getting a series of energy sword kills or landing the perfect rocket shot. It doesn't actually matter that much. Just the whole experience of playing those first Halo games is really nostalgic. Especially for anybody who grew up with them. And uh, number seven, installing Steam to play Half-Life 2. Remember when everybody was complaining about having to install Steam to play Half-Life 2? It's one of the most anticipated sequels of all time, and Valve had the brass balls to force people to install a client to play it, even if you had the disc version. I mean, it wasn't completely unheard of to have a client in 2004, like MMOs like EverQuest and World of Warcraft. Uh, actually, Ever just EverQuest, because World of Warcraft, I think, came out a week after Half-Life 2. But same thing, right? More people were complaining about Half-Life 2, if I remember right. But being forced to sign up for something was... Just 
just weird for a single player game. And I remember being pretty skeptical about it. I mean, looking back about 20 years later, it's been a couple decades, right? Nah, I'm not going to do the math. The concern kind of seems a little ridiculous considering how ubiquitous Steam is now and how beneficial it's been for the PC gaming market as a whole. But at the time, we're all annoyed about having to install this seemingly pointless program. You know, kind of like how we feel every time we have to like install Uplay or whatever launcher some idiot businessman foists on the gaming division. Like, do they really think that they're going to have another Steam? I mean, Epic Games had to massively undercut Steam's prices, and, and their market share is not even comparable at the moment. Yeah, Epic is doing pretty good, but Steam dominates. They have between 75 and 80% of the market currently, according to various estimates. Still, I was really grumbling through the entire setup process, but like everyone else, I accepted it because I wanted to play Half-Life 2. Back then, I probably would have let Valve install like a keylogger just to get Half-Life 2. That's how much I wanted to play that game. And it's still a classic today. With the release of Black Mesa, the sort of remake of the original Half-Life, I mean, that was a while back, but that'll always make you want to play Half-Life 2. But it's just kind of funny to look back at all the grumbling about Steam back then. Like, look at PC gaming today. Like, there are things about Steam that I like and things that I don't. But I do get a little nostalgic when I see screenshots, the old green interface and the tiny game library. Back in 2004, I don't, I don't think anybody would have guessed what Steam would be or how big it would eventually get. It's kind of insane. At number six, the iconic start screens of a lot of games. Like, there's still some pretty good ones now, but back in the 2000s, they really made that into a thing. Like, even before the game started, the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox startup screens were amazing. Like, they were elaborate and they'd burn through your brain without being too long or annoying. But, like, think about the original Halo menu. That is one of the most iconic video game things ever. Every time I would start that game up, I remember just, like, sitting for a minute to take it in because it, it would really put you into that world. But you could even say the same for Need for Speed Underground, which is less uh, atmospheric and doesn't have the grandeur of the Halo starting screen, but it did have Get Low from Lil Jon, which would just hype you to no end. You were ready to race by the time you were racing. Another really good one was the original Metroid Prime. It had this awesome, sinister soundtrack and really good visual effects that fit the game perfectly. Like, I could list off iconic intro songs all day. Uh, like, the amazing Grinder, uh, Red Alert 2's theme song. The somber menu music to Max Payne. The upbeat earworm that is The Sims theme. Like, you could probably list this stuff all day. This is easily capable of its own video. There's little details you could talk about with all of them. But let's just keep it short and say it was just some amazing and nostalgic main menus from the 2000s. And number five, the rush of using motion controls for the first time in Wii Sports. Uh, like, I remember when the Wii was new. No one really knew quite what to think about it when it came out. A lot of industry people speculated the gimmicky new machine would be the end of Nintendo, and boy, that was dumb. Not only did the Wii sell about 20 million more units than both of its much more powerful competitors, the PS3 and the Xbox 360, but it was pretty much unavoidable. Like, either you had one, your parents had one, your friends had one, somebody in your life had one. I mean, it was a mega hit, and it totally reversed Nintendo's fortunes. And the game most people played first was Wii Sports. That first time you used a Wii controller, as long as it was working properly and you were playing a game that was actually good, it was kind of magical. Like he swung the controller and the guy on the screen swung the racket. It felt like this thing would never work because he'd seen tons of stuff like this before, like maybe he had a power glove as a kid or that weird U-Force thing. And, and most of those old motion control gimmicks just didn't work at all. But this one does. Like, it works pretty damn well. And, like, as a novelty, it does wear off eventually. But Nintendo put out a lot of quality games on the Wii, so it was a good system beyond the gimmicks. Hardly perfect. Obviously, it was not much more powerful than the GameCube. And even the motion controls weren't perfect before the Wii Motion Plus upgrade. But when it worked, it was a ton of fun. As long as you didn't throw it at the TV.
And number four is nailing a song in front of your friends playing Guitar Hero. Gimmicky controllers were all the rage in the 2000s. We ate them up. But I cannot think of a gaming phenomenon that got bigger at the time that also burnt out so quickly. Like, everyone loved Guitar Hero one day, and the next day, people stopped caring completely. I think, again, this is the subject of its own video. I don't think it's just that people got bored with it. I think that there are things that we can absolutely say about it. Oversaturated market, too many releases, the weird splitting of Rock Band and Guitar Hero, etc., etc. And then there was that really awful attempt to make a new one. But when it was at its height everyone wanted to be the guitar hero champion uh, like play all the songs on extreme get a perfect rating on through the fire and flames it's just something you had to do in the 2000s to prove your gamer cred there's something so nostalgic about going back through the original guitar hero games just screwing around i'm nowhere near as good as i used to be but it's fun to try the presentation of these games is still amazing and even though any real guitar player would scoff at anyone playing these games with a toy controller it's still a fun game Back in the day, just getting through some of the harder songs on Expert really made you feel like a god. Especially if you had some friends over who could barely get through I Wanna Rock on Easy. Yeah. At number three, experiencing Baron's chat in World of Warcraft. Uh, what do you need to say beyond that? Anyone who played World of Warcraft back when it first came out has to remember the Horde chat. Unless they played Alliance, but do those people really matter a whole lot? What made it so famous or infamous, whatever, is how big the Baron zone was. Basically two massive zones smushed together. And all three major starting zones were connected to it. So it was there where everyone in the Horde converged. Unlike the Alliance where everyone's starting zones were pretty spread out. It was inescapable though. You could try to mute it. But how many people actually did that? It was a place where people argued about politics, got into petty slap fights, made tons of stupid jokes. It was a free-for-all. Probably the best and worst of internet culture at least somehow intersects with that. Like, people could be incredibly generous and helpful, and they'd be coexisting with, like, the most obnoxious trolls in the world. It was somehow just kind of a more innocent time. And when I think of early World of Warcraft, Baron's Chat's the thing that probably sticks out in my mind more than anything else. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about, and if you weren't, I don't know if you should consider yourself lucky or unlucky, but I'll say I, I don't hang around World of Warcraft anymore, and part of it is that feeling is gone. And number two is playing the iconic openings of various games. Well, kind of like the start screen point, I'm going to use this as a bit of a catch-all for some of our favorite opening moments in games. Like, the first time you see a chainsaw in Resident Evil 4, that first big combat sequence in the town was terrifying for anyone who first played it, especially when the chainsaw came out. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas has a less flashy, but still amazing opening. Like, who doesn't remember CJ's line after getting dumped in the back alley at the start of the game? Here we go again. Worst place in the world. Rolling Heights, ball of country. It's so nostalgic that it became a meme more than 10 years later. Like, I saw someone use that meme yesterday. Like, it is that fresh on my mind. When it comes to open world reveals, it doesn't get a lot better than when you finally exit Vault 101 in Fallout 3. Or when you see Rapture that first time in Bioshock. What a hell of an intro. Uh, the opening moments of Arkham Asylum also still amazing to this day. Like the entire walk with the Joker, with the opening credits, and the multiple fake outs. Uh, it's just... It's so well done. Metal Gear Solid 2's freighter sequence is arguably the best part of the entire game. And not just because you're playing a Solid Snake, but that does help with the iconic element of this. City Escape and Sonic Adventure 2 outrunning that gun truck. I mean, come on, man. The 2000s are really just when games started to go all out with their intros. There's like too many good ones to count. And at number one, playing Flash games at school when nobody was looking or with teachers who didn't care what you did with your time. It just doesn't get any more nostalgic than this. Like playing Flash games at school during computer lab, foundational memory for a lot of us. And with the Flash format totally dead, many of these games only exist in our memories. Like the list of freely available Flash games is pretty much endless. Stuff like Breaking the Bank or Club Penguin, hugely popular games. But my personal favorites were the Homestar Runner games. The site itself is pretty nostalgic. Like, you remember uh, Strong Bad? Talking like this, 
Yeah, I do. And you can still play most of the games on an emulator, but the experience isn't quite the same. Some all-time classics from that site include likes of Stinko Man, The Dungeon Man, Peasant's Quest. Pretty much everything on that site was excellent time wasters if you're a kid with no money and too much free time. There's still plenty of free games to play online now, obviously. I'm not saying there aren't, but when I think of the 2000s, I think of Flash and all of the insane crap that turned out to be incredibly fun, innovative games uh, that, again, are all pretty much just gone forever. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks right here on Game Rank.